Yeah, we have officially switched over from um, Skype to Discord. I want to point out, Tara has not changed any of her hardware. She's using no. the same computer, same microphone setup, same webcam. All we did was move over to Discord yeah, from Skype. That's it. Um, Tara looks clearer here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, I, I, I'm not being paid or promoted by Discord, though I would not be adverse, Discord. Hi, how you doing? Big fan. Um, but this is to say, Discord is a, their own company. I, as far as I know, they're not owned by anyone. And Skype is owned by oh la la, Microsoft, which, in case you don't know, they're the Windows people. Kind of a big deal. They, they own they they own the Skypes, and yet here's Discord, which is not it's, a billion just dollar. Working. Yeah, not a a billion dollar country a company. It, um, might as well be a country now, honestly. Um, yeah, and thankfully Discord avoided being bought out by Microsoft because yeah, but S Skype is just so. T I have relied on Skype for a solid decade. Yeah. And I should, I honestly, in all, all honesty, the minute Discord got video capability, we should have abandoned them. Because we flirted with Google Hangouts for a while, but that didn't last. No, that was problematic. Actually, we might change this. I don't know how, one of the, prob one of the problems of Discord, the, the issues we're going to have to get over is um, it runs on either one of two things, push to talk or volume sensing. So, oh. yeah, it either it hears when you talk or you push down a button and that keeps it going. I would rather it just stay going, but I don't want Tara to have to sit there pushing down a button the entire time through the bit in order to be heard. So I'm going to see if there's a workaround for that for next time, because while the push to talk, while, while they're just talking and being sensed by the microphone, while that works, it's not ideal because for recording purposes. Because oh, I know on Spike, if we Spike, we're like Skype, anytime we had crosstalk, like one of us would cut off the other. Yeah, I, is I that just, the same problem? Kind of bits, little tiny bits of your words, not enough to be even noticed, but enough that I can hear it, and it's it's for a recording. Kind of being shaved off around the edges. It's yeah. not it's not the end of the world. We'll be fine for tonight, but I'm going to look into some way to just leave it on if there's some sort of mod or Ideally, something. Ideally, we would love to sound like an angrier, more foul mouthed NPR. We should do a whole show one week in like our NPR voices. <laughs> Welcome to what the night wrong with you. Let's see what those crazy Floridians have gotten up to this week. Just be like very soothing but also incredibly vulgar. Smooth and smarmy. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here. What the segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? Now, doing this is not necessarily all horrific. Um, oh. Sometimes, in the process of looking up stories and looking through the stories you send me, something special shows up. And we're not really going to talk about this one very much. It's just the headline is magical. There are moments in your life. You could work a lifetime in journalism and not get the chance that the spokesman review got to print this headline. That, ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at right there, that is magic. That is serendipity. That's like if you're the headline writer, that's the day you hope you die. Because it's never going to get better. It's, it's never getting any, it, it's only, it doesn't get any better than this, literally. This is as good as it gets. Oh, that poor, beautiful car, though. I know. <sighs> that is a beautiful car. Someone in the comments actually said, and I loved it. I guess they should have known by the way they parked their car sideways, it, it wouldn't last. <laughs> Kudos to 
kudos. Yeah. You you amused it. It wasn't. This is one of those things that was not like horrific and didn't make me. It was, I was so happy to see this. It's the little thing. All right. Now let's get into the shit that's terrible. We go to California. Kick us off this week. Knott's Berry Farms. Man climbs 300 foot Supreme Scream Tower at Knott's Berry Farm. Supreme Scream is their one of the rides. Their, uh, I is believe, that like one of the free fall things? I don't know. I think it's probably. Um, Where they just fucking drop you. A man, a man who climbed atop a tall ride. Okay, let, first of all, let, let's stop here at the Orange County Register. 300 feet is not tall. That that's that's got that that's a building right there. That's fucking that's that's not just tall. I'm tall. I'm six feet tall. Okay, six foot one, that's tall. Three hundred feet. That's 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 fucking terrifying, is what that is. I mean it's not tall for like a kaiju. <laughs> <laughs> well he wasn't a kaiju, now was he? That'd be the run to the kaiju litter. Yeah. Drew the attention of authorities and park goers Saturday evening when he stood atop the more than 300 foot tower for more than one hour. The first headline I saw for this was he refused to come down. And the only thing I could think was, no, because you're going to yell at me. That's always the first thing you think. That's all, well, it's, 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 it's still funny. It's still funny. Um... I son of a bitch. What the but fuck why? happened? Yes. What okay, look, did, did it were you just hanging out at the park having a nice day and the monkey part of your brain took over and said, I'm gonna climb that shit. Like we all get those impulses now and again out in public, like, oh that looked like it'd be fun to climb. That looked like it'd be fun to do. It'd be fun to throw a water balloon from here or something. We don't do this shit. No. But bless your heart. Also, you... like, it's literally a whole place full of things designed to be thrilling and scary. Right. <laughs> you know what could you could have done? You could have just rode the ride. Yeah. It, it would have gotten you up there. Like, they'll take you up there. Yeah. They'll, they'll take... strap you into a little thing specifically designed to take you up there. You go right up. That's why it's there. Mm -hmm. They're happy to. Or you could just go climb a fucking cell phone tower for free. And you know what? If you climb a cell phone tower, they don't have to close the park because of your dumb ass. You have ruined everybody's day. People have taken, and you know, people take their kids out the theme park, middle of the plague, just trying to make them feel better. There's no future for them. The world's going to burn. Let them have a, let them have a merry go round for fuck's sake. No, your ass has to go play climbing. Yeah, jump up to the top of the fucking... What the fuck were you fucking thinking? You fucker. God damn. I'm, I'm kind of... I'm just kind of... The, the dude, very inconsiderate. What? Like the sentence in the article, the height of the tower made communication with the man difficult. Will you come down? What? 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 Was he not with anybody that had his cell phone number? <laughs> Just call him. Now you get up to 300 feet. You, there's wind. There's a lot of wind up there. Because there's nothing stopping the air. Yeah, like how did you even hang on that long? Yeah, what? You're probably lucky you didn't come down involuntarily. <laughs> he climbed. He climbed down on his own. Silly bastard. All right. Next up, speaking of silly bastards, there is no explanation for, explanation for this in the story, but we know the explanation for this. We all know it. We're going we're gonna to get there, but we all know why this happened. We, th the story doesn't know why this happened, but we know why this happened. Man sets own car ablaze on I-80 to scare off... The Bears. Started like with the football team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Listen, they ain't there to cause no trouble. They just want to do the Super Bowl <laughs> shuffle. Exactly. That's going to bother you. Uh, started with a call to the California Highway Patrol around 5.30 a.m. There's a car ablaze on Interstate 80 by the California-Nevada border. When officials arrived in the scene of this altogether not unusual occurrence, they found a man in his 30s yelling about, quote, the bears. Officers then determined the man had set his own vehicle ablaze to stave off these so-called bears. The cop is, quote, listen, we have bears in the area, Perer says, but there were no bears nearby. Officers made haste to put out the fire as the car was surrounded by brushy hillsides and then put the man on the rest. He was charged with arson and being under the influence of alcohol or a controlled substance. We all know. You know, we know, we all know which controlled substance this is. Because it's always meth. It's always... It's fire season mm -hmm. in the western United States. Yes. This is a new experience for me. I've only lived in a fire season place for a year. But it's fucking fire season here. Yes. And fire season is way worse because we are living in the apocalypse. Yes. It doesn't need help. Like, they, they don't want you setting any fires you don't fucking need to right now. Because you just never goddamn know. Like, they're like, you want to make s'mores? You have a stove top. Don't fuck with us. I, we, th this whole show is just turning into don't do meth. That should be the title now. That's what this fucking show turns into. It's so much of it. And I still... I, I've been doing this for like a decade now, I think. Mm -hmm. And I still have yet to hear a compelling reason why you would want to do meth. It's like it, you can't just sit at home and turn on some TV and get a snack and do meth. There's there's no just no. it's not a youth. It's not a it's always a spectator sport and it's always involuntary. You're always setting fires to ward off the imaginary bears. Meth needs to be an Olympic sport. Does fire, will small fires even scare bird, scare bears away? I don't know. Depends on the bear. Like a large enough fire will scare anything away. Uh, it, it, it depends on how much the bear gives a fuck. But like people camp all the mm. time. I, I, no, meth needs to be an Olympic sport. We need to just, <laughs> we need to just take a I bunch. think we just... I think we just need a separate Meth Olympics, actually. Yeah, we, we need to take people from all over the world, one from every country, and bring them all together and give them meth and just see what they do. And the one that does the most impressive <laughs> shit wins. That sounds like something in between idiocracy and the Hunger Games. <laughs> it's, it's the only thing this drug is good for. It's the only fucking thing. Like, that's a weird-ass mashup that had never occurred to me. <sighs> well, it's... You might be on to something there. It's rare that we have to ask the question on the show, is the gamers okay? Um, but I we... Mean, no. We have to ask it tonight, um, because we all know if you let the gamers loose on the internet, terrible things are going to happen. It's it's like you just let loose a, a a bag of feral cats into the small pet section at PetSmart. It's it's bad. Um. So, but some I think this is the first time one of them has ever publicly committed an act of espionage. War Thunder fan says tank is inaccurate. Leaks classified military documents to prove it. What? Challenger 2 is a main battle tank that's been in service with the British Army since 1904. Uh, also, which time is an operational service in Bosnia, blah, blah, blah. It can be found in War Thunder, Gaijin Entertainment's free-to-play online war game. Um, 
There's a fair commitment to accuracy in the game. The simulator battle mode goes all out on realistic uh, vehicles and weapon physics. The rollout of the Challenger 2 tank in 2019, for instance, sparked this thread, 319, 319 pages long and still growing. Things got out of hand earlier this week, however, when one player demonstrated a little too much commitment to realism. The player, who claims to be a real-life Challenger 2 tank commander and former member of the British Army's Armored Tank Trials and Development Unit, complained the War Thunder's in-game model is significantly off the mark in ways that leave it much more vulnerable. And then to prove the point, they posted classified images from the Challenger 2 Army Equipment Support publication, which is basically the tank's user manual. According to the UK Defense Journal, the images were heavily redacted and carried UK-restricted labels, but those were crossed out. The stamp of unclassified was added. Gaijin un understandably reacted with extreme caution, saying proof of this document's declassification will be required, as well as where it was sourced before any action based upon it could be taken. <laughs> Afterward, this is the part. Shortly after that, a senior technical moderator weighed in to say that Gaijin had been in contact with the UK Ministry of Defense which had informed it in writing, the manual is in fact classified. All of the jail! Yeah. A oh. list of things you never thought you'd have to do <laughs> as a game developer. <laughs> Calling up the Ministry of Defense to ask if this document... <laughs> You got dumped on your website is classified. Like this person's probably making 50 grand a year. Yep. And then to be like, uh, hello, Colonel. I have a thing. It's not my thing, but I want to know if I should have it. <laughs> so not only not only did this motherfucker publish classified shit, he made it look like, no, no, it's really not. He fucking photoshopped the shit. That's some Donald Trump sharpieing the path of a hurricane shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is the of all the reasons, which is, you know, you are you feel like your country is doing something wrong. You are trying you are acting under your principles right. of all the reason to leak classified data like Pentagon papers and shit of all the reasons to win a video game argument. That ain't it. No. You, you just... And oh. I'm like, I know I'm not into video game culture, so there are going to be people who yell at me for this. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> I don't understand the fucking minutia people will argue about. It's Star Wars, too. Star Wars fans, man. Holy shit. <laughs> like, they will yell at cosplayers because Ray's top is eggshell instead of slate. Like, Fuck. <laughs> A 300 page thread? A uh, 300, yep. Why? It's a pretending video game. <laughs> Why? I, I don't know. I honest to God don't. I, I know, I'm into it and I still don't know. I know not. there's going to be 72 fucking teenagers in the YouTube comments yelling at me and go back to your fucking Fortnite because I am not <sighs> impressed. <laughs> Calm down. Motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is a uh, fuck. You're going to have the home office on your front doorstep, my, my dude. Yeah, also, like, I know people think that if it's on the internet, it's not real and that nobody can find you. They can fucking find you. You have an IP address. They gave all. They can track that, it. They gave the defense ministry all that. They gave. They just said, "Do you want it? Because we got it. You can have it. We don't care. We don't. It, we didn't do it. It is. It is the year of our Lord King, twenty twenty one. We are beyond the point where it is reasonable to think that if you put it on the internet, it's not real life. We're past that now. Mm -hmm. You grew up with the fucking internet. Your ass knows better. Yeah. This is not some alien landscape. This isn't Keanu Reeves with the fucking cyberspace bullshit from like fucking Johnny Mnemonic. This ain't that shit. You like asshole. when we were kids. Yeah, we didn't understand that shit. No. Well, 
Because the internet was new. I mean, you, you, we is a little broad there, but... But well, the internet's not new anymore. No, it's not. Oh, well, let's move along to... I think this is probably the fastest someone has ever been proved wrong. But just like instantaneously. You, keep, you can't arrest me for anything. Ex-con drunkenly broke into the Yakima County Jail. Yakima, Washington. Probably heard about inmates trying to break out of jail, but I bet you haven't heard about someone getting in trouble for breaking into jail. 31-year-old ex-convict got drunk and broke into the Yakima County Jail on Tuesday night leading to an easy arrest for the authorities. Authorities claim the suspect jumped over the fence surrounding the jailhouse. And that's a tall fence. That's the picture right there. Um, you know, pull it down so you guys can that. That's a tall ass fence. Jumped the fence. That's some Spider-Man shit. Went straight for the visitor's entrance. There, the drunken man broke the door handle off the entrance and used it to shatter glass and enter the facility. Once inside, he made it to the lobby where authorities made contact with the man. Just before being arrested, the suspect shouted, quote, you can't arrest me for anything. Well. Dot, dot, dot. I think we can. They can arrest you for literally nothing. Yes. It's not right. No, it's not. They shouldn't. But like, I don't know if you've been watching the latest season of America. <laughs> But they'll arrest you for being in the same neighborhood as a protest. Yeah. Like, that's not okay, but they can, in fact, arrest you, apparently, for anything they fucking want. It's like, you were fucking, it's like the T-Rex. It's, it, it's not, vision is not based on motion. It can see your ass. You, is it? Hmm? Wasn't it the jail in Yakima? that Coop's doppelganger got locked up in in season three of Twin Peaks? That's too deep, Dara. That's, that's too fucking deep. Just saying. That's too fucking deep. Maybe there's some Black Lodge shit going on here. No, that there's, there's some Black Label shit going on here. <laughs> but also, like, why are you you're an ex-con. Why are you trying to get back in? You got you won. You're out. You're done. What did you forget something? <laughs> and I know that there are I know that there are people that after they're in prison for a long time, like they have serious phobia about going right, back out right. into the world. The answer to that is not to break back in. No. Once you're out, you're out. <sighs> All right. Well, we're moving right along. Um, say that. Uh, okay. Th this one, uh, I know exactly how this happened. And this happened because of old dad. You remember, you and I both, we had our fathers get, to, get, to get older. And you remember when they were older, they would just have a, oh, oh fuck it. They would have just this 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 scent this this aura of at a, at a moment when they just been done with it they were done with it it just ah oh, fuck family parties my dad at a certain point would just tell whoever was nearest him tell her when she's done I'm in the car meaning my mom and like three hours before the car was the party was over he would just fuck off and sit in the car until my mom was ready to leave okay so this. This is some this is some old dad energy right here. And you'll find out why. Man arrested after fake bomb threat at Florida airport was upset over bag fee. There's a saga here. Rather than paying a bag fee, adamantly disagreed with a Canadian man told an airline employee in Fort Lauderdale Airport on Saturday that there was a bomb in his luggage. Uh, Weagle Rosen's comments. Weagle Rosen? That's that's the name. Saturday morning prompted authorities to evacuate three terminals and halt all operation at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport for hours. Rosen, they don't fuck around with that shit. Seventy four was arrested and charged with making a false report. Now listen to how this happened. 
He was engaged uh, at the Air Canada counter in a heated verbal argument with an employee over additional charges for baggage in the airline's no cash policy. The employee told Rosen he needed to walk from Terminal 2 to Terminal 3 to purchase a Visa credit card for his carry-on fee. Rosen then walked away without his luggage, and when the employee told him he needed to take it, Rosen had responded by telling the employee there was a bomb in the bag. This is the, this is like, this is fuck it. This is, hey, you keep us bomb in there. Old grumpy dad. Except old grumpy dad is normally in, a, in, a, in an environment where people just sort of deal with him. They're just like, okay, yeah. that's dad. The airport is not that environment. No. Like, when you're around your family and you get to 70, 80, you were allowed some shit. We just, we're done. We're like, okay, fuck it. He's, he's going to be what? He's waiting in the car till the party's over. Fine. Exactly. The airport doesn't have to do that. No, and they're not going to. <clears throat> like, they're going to take your bag. Yeah. This is one of those, and like, I have this problem. My mouth moves faster than my brain sometimes, but I know when I can't get away with that because like, they're going to take your bag and you're never going to see it again. No. And also you're not getting on your flight. In extreme cases, they're going to destroy that bag just to be safe. Yeah. And you might be going to jail. Oh, he is in jail. Could not be reached for comment. Records show the Broward County Sheriff's Office. He remained in jail early, early Tuesday afternoon on $20,000 bond. Um, like, even in Florida, they don't put up with this shit. No. He's only got faces up to 15 years in prison. Uh, Rose's attorney. Who they the don't fuck around with that shit. Rose's attorney, who the publication did not name, said his client said, quote, the magic words you do not say. I've you said it before, like, if, if you're there with your parental units, mother. You don't call her mom. Mm -hmm. If you're there with your friend Thomas, he is Thomas. He is not Tom. Tom, no. I, you, don't, you don't take any chances. I've told this story before. One of my favorite musicians, uh, Richard Schindel, uh, told a story once. He was trying to get on an airplane with his instruments once. And as he was passing through security, um, one of them asked him, what's in there? And he said, my bazooki. And that caused some issues happened following that. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I actually thought that one was. All right. Final story this week comes from Dallas, Fort Worth. And there are layers. This one's like a, a, a fucking layer dip of terrifying. Um, I want to stress the homeowners association wasn't even involved here. This is, this is just, this is the city. Fort Worth police barricaded suspect shoots at police mowers after high grass violation. Person shot at Fort Worth officers and a mowing crew on Friday morning then barricaded himself inside his home. Over his lawn? After code compliance officials tried to issue a violation for the home's grass being too high. This person's now in custody. The situation unfolded Friday at a home in Cedar, uh, off uh, Cedar Springs Drive in North, Worth, at, in North Fort Worth. No one was injured. Code compliance and police officers went to the home around 8.30 a.m. to issue a violation for the home's grass being too high. When the homeowner didn't answer the door. An independent mowing company began to mow the lawn. Shortly after that, a person inside the home began shooting at the mowers. Officers took cover, waited for backup. The person inside the home, inside the home then fired shots toward officers two more times. Squad used to report the home where the suspect was barricaded inside. Person is in custody as of 2.45 p.m. All right, let's start at the top layer, which is... Holy shit, man, you're shooting at the cops. You're fucking yeah. shooting at the cops. In America. Also, listen, you didn't want to mow your lawn. They brought in someone to do it for you. You fucking win. 
there's there's a rule in America, and it is not a real rule. It shouldn't be a rule, but it is a rule, and that is cops are allowed to kill you. They shouldn't. It's actually not legal. But we pretend it is. But pretend they get away with it? Yeah. Do not taunt happy fun. I mean, th there's like minding your own business, walking down the street and get and cops. That's 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 fuck them. But here's you with a gun shooting at the people who are allowed to shoot back. Is he white? Uh, he was arrested alive, so I'm going to go ahead and say we can probably assume he's white. They, I don't know that for sure. Yeah, they don't name him. We don't see him. But it's Texas. Yeah. And he got taken alive. So I feel like the odds are he's probably like, white. God damn. Now, all right, that's the first layer. Let's go down to the second layer. Wait a minute. The city is allowed to come to your house and a private company is allowed on your property with an armed escort to mow your lawn without your permission. Because your grass is too high. Of all places in Texas, of all places in Texas, you'd think that wouldn't be a thing, right? Yeah, you think of all places. I mean, people were pointing out when I was talking about this on Twitter, people were pointing out um, it, it's if you have like a barrel of guns, that's fine. But if your lawn gets too high, armed response. Now, like tall grass is a problem <clears throat> if you have ticks. Like, I get that. But also, lawns are fucking terrible for the environment. Yeah, that's true. And there are people trying to embrace like a more native, like not cutting their lawn and letting wildflowers grow yeah. and trying to, you know, attract a bit more nature into the world. Like we have a little mini yard and it's just, we have ground cover that's like succulents and I love that. So I get like why the high grass could be a problem if you live in an area with a lot of ticks or what have you, or if they're standing water or fire but, season, yeah, you shouldn't be able to just like fire season. You, you shouldn't just be able to roll up a SWAT team and right. Start fucking around on someone's lawn. That's that's yeah. It's what the fuck kind of ordinance is this? Because you didn't respond to the citation. They're allowed to mow your lawn with the police backup. I might add. Although yeah. the other hand, to be fair, um, he did start shooting at the mowers. So, way to justify this bullshit, my dude. Thanks, yeah. you're ruining it for everybody. We've had an issue. Our little front yard lit is kind of a mess, and I've had two landscapers ghost me now. I'm trying to get it fixed. Yeah, they just disappear off the face of the planet when I need them to send me an estimate. And like Dan obviously is not able to spend a whole day out gardening because he's in fucking chemo and he's tired a lot. Yeah. So I've been trying to deal with this. It's a bit of a mess. We're a little like it's a little embarrassing. We're kind of a crummiest yard on the block. Last weekend, I looked at our front window and I was like, Dan, there's there's some woman out front pulling our weeds. Our neighbor's mom takes care of their little garden. <laughs> and she kind of just walked over and weeded our front. I guess it was that bad. <laughs> and I was like, that's so nice, but also I'm really embarrassed. So we sent a thank you card. Mm. Um, but yeah, they didn't just roll tanks up to our house. No, they did not. That's no, I no. I would have been much more upset about that. No. So I, yeah. Okay. Than just the nice lady next door, just weeding our front. So the, uh, the first thing, we learned this week is um Fort Worth is deeply fucked. I'm I mean Texas, so yeah. I'm curious about what other ordinances are on the books there. If that one is allowed, if that's considered normal. I'm that's that's a cause for concern. Um Texas just Texas as a concept just freaks me out anymore. We've learned the shit your family will put up with because you're old and cranky is limited to your blood relatives. 
They're definitely stuck. not the airport. Yeah, they're stuck with your ass. Air Canada isn't. Um, we've learned that once you've gotten out of jail, you win. Don't go back. Yeah. Don't break back in. What did you? We've learned if you are violating espionage laws to win a video game argument, you've got to rethink a lot of shit, my dude. You might want to talk to somebody about that. The greatest day of my life was when I realized I don't have to win internet arguments. And I, in fact, you, you can't win internet arguments. No. Once you learn oh, that, what's so fun is when the people who still think you can, like when you won't play with them, they get so mad. When you won't play and fight back and argue, they get very upset, and it's really gratifying. We've learned that. I highly recommend it. We've learned that the drug that makes you fear bears so much you set your own car on fire is a bad drug. Stop Don't doing do stop doing math. Just stop. And finally, we've learned you might feel like climbing something, but maybe don't. Yeah. Like we have we have crossed a couple million years of evolution just for your ass to go chimpanzee at the first fucking opportunity. Stop it. No, it's very farm. Climb up the giant thing, have to close everything. Think about the kids. 